Michael Mann's filmmaking career spans 40 years, and he's known for making a stable of meticulously researched thrillers, in particular the seminal crime saga, Heat. While it remains the jewel in man's crown, Thief and Manhunter, made nearly a decade earlier, were his first attempts at bringing crime stories to our screens. Yet between the production of these films, Man helmed an adaptation of F. Paul Wilson's best-selling horror novel, The Keep. Keep appealed to me because it seemed as if it could be moved out of the horror genre into something else. The something else is, in fact, a dream. Most horror films, there's attempts at explanation of where non-natural events came from. You, you attempt to explain cause usually in some bad pseudo-scientific way. In dreams, those things aren't explained. They're just there with amazing power. Man's adaptation for Paramount Pictures moved away from the novel's reframing of the vampire myth. He reimagined it as a dark fairy tale which tapped into dream logic and the horrors of World War II. Both the novel and film are set in the Carpathian Mountains of Romania, where a platoon of Nazi soldiers occupy an ancient citadel, and when their presence awakens a supernatural entity, the platoon is gradually slaughtered. I wanted to do something very expressionistic and wanted to get into a dream uh, and have things uh, be as highly stylized and expressionistic as they are sometimes in dreams. When you're frustrated, in a dream, you are really frustrated and you can't get out of that locked into the same repetitive movement. You can't stop running or you can't run fast enough. Well, when there's passion in a dream, it has a vividness and a color that's, that's almost beyond reality. While The Keep remains a departure in genre for a director whose career to this point and thereafter have been committed to realism, visually, it remains one of his most striking works and features imagery synonymous with his most popular films. Scott Glenn plays the hero Glachen, Jürgen Prochnow and Gabriel Byrne are both magnificently cast as Nazi officers, and Ian McKellen features as the Jewish Dr. Kuser. Having previously worked with Tangerine Dream on Thief, Mann brought them in to deliver an electronic score, adding the perfect counterpoint to his dark fairy tale. His crew was made up of three-time Academy Award-winning production designer John Box, cinematographer Alex Thompson, who had previously shot John Borman's epic Excalibur, and visual effects master Wally Vivas, who was one of four men responsible for attaining technical perfection in Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. It was a joy to make that film. Uh, I got to work with John Box, who was the production designer. He was just a great guy, and um, the sets were spectacular. We built at Shepard. And tragically, a man named Wally Vivers, the head visual effects supervisor in 2001, passed away during, during our post-production. And we were never able quite to figure out how we had planned to combine all these components that were shot because it wasn't anything usual like green screen or blue screen. It was black velvet and all kinds of strange stuff. Man was forced to reshoot multiple endings and the studio asked for him to deliver his director's cut. Paramount executives then decided to re-edit the film, which resulted in a jarring narrative, thrusting the audience into the middle of key scenes and it removed many of the film's subplots. Yet while the Paramount edit is nightmarish and at times incomprehensible, it simultaneously taps into the dream logic Man had originally intended for the film. You never really remember the beginning of a dream, do you? You always wind up right in the middle of what's going on. I guess, yeah. In dreams, those things aren't explained. They're just there with amazing power. When you're frustrated in a dream, you are really frustrated and you can't get out of that locked into the same repetitive movement. You can't stop running or you can't run fast enough. Well, when there's passion in a dream, it has a vividness and a color that's, that's almost beyond reality. Upon release of the film, Man was cast as the villain in what was ultimately Paramount Pictures' decision to edit out around 30 minutes from his two-hour director's cut. Add to that, F. Paul Wilson's criticism for deviating from the source novel and it plays out like Man went rogue and the studio intervened to save the picture. But when you consider Man went on to consecutively direct Manhunter, Last of the Mohicans, Heat, The Insider, 
and Ali, you just cannot help but be curious about his director's cut. The keep, much like a dream, becomes far more interesting when you try to decipher it. Luckily, Paramount Pictures left enough on screen for those curious enough to venture deeper into man's supernatural dreamscape and discover one of cinema's great unrealised visions. <laughs>